All right, welcome back guys. In this video, I just wanna go over what is momentum. So we're gonna be talking about linear momentum and we usually denote it with a capital L. Some people will use other letters, but that's what I'm going to use for now. And it is just mass times velocity of a body. So really when someone asks you what the linear momentum of a body is that's in motion, it's just it's mass times its velocity. It's as simple as that. Um, but we can actually find it in Newton's second law. So if we write that, Newton's second law is the sum of forces is equal to mass times acceleration. This is also referred to as the equation of motion. So we can actually find the term momentum in here if we rearrange it a little bit. So let's take the left hand side and we'll keep it the same. On the right hand side, we'll rewrite acceleration as the change in velocity over time, dv dt. Then what we want to do is we want to multiply dt to both sides. So we have sum of forces dt is equal to m dv. All right, so we're gonna integrate both sides now. Just throw those signs on. So we have the sum of forces dt is equal to the integral of m dv. Now in most problems uh, that are involving impulse and momentum where like bodies are colliding or impacting, the mass will be constant. So we can bring the mass outside of that integral sign. So the left hand side will stay the same, sum of forces dt. And that's going to be equal to m times the integral of dv. Um, problems where mass might not be constant would be involving um, like rockets, you know, when they're burning fuel, um, as it goes up, it's uh, it's losing mass because it's burning off the, the fuel that's on board. But for simple impact and momentum problems, like, like I said, car crashes, baseball bats, hitting baseballs, stuff like that, mass is constant. Um, what we should actually be doing in here is writing in our bounds for integration as well. Got a little bit ahead of myself. So we're gonna go from T1 to T2 and V1 to V2. Um, We'll put that down here as well, t1 to t2, and v1 to v2. Um, it's important to mention that basically v1 is just equal to the velocity at t1, and v2 is just equal to the velocity at t2. Okay, so we're gonna keep the left-hand side exactly the same. We have t1, t2, the sum of forces dt, and on the right hand side, we can really easily evaluate this integral as m. It just simplifies to v2 minus v1. If you want, you can distribute the m. Um, let's just write it over here, the whole thing. You can distribute the m through, uh, through the brackets there. So we'll write the left hand side the same, t2, t1, sum of forces, dt. Uh, and then we'll change the right hand side to m v2 minus m v1. So the first term is momentum at time 2 and the second term is momentum at time 1. Right, because we just have mass times velocity and mass times velocity and this is at t1 and this is at t2. And really what we're seeing here is mv2 or momentum 2 minus momentum 1 is just equal to the change in momentum. All right, so all that was basically just to show you that the quantities for linear momentum are appearing in the right hand side of Newton's second law after we worked it a little bit. So I'm going to keep talking about this equation for the next few videos, but for now you just need to know that momentum is a vector quantity and that it is the product of mass and velocity. And also it's got units of kilogram, I'm gonna write this too, it's units are kilograms times meters per second. All right, that's the units of linear momentum. All right, I will see you guys in the next video and I will talk about what is an impulse and just a hint for you guys, it's coming from the left-hand side of this equation.